Welcome, grade 10s, to this session on waves and vibrations. Let's join Keke, who will show us a variety of different waves. Most people link the word waves with water. We think of waves crashing on the beach or waves rocking a boat on a dam. Maybe this word makes you think about a Mexican wave created by excited fans at a sports match, or even the waves that roll through a field of grass on a windy day. But waves are all around us, even if we don't see them. Did you know that waves make it possible for us to listen to the radio and receive cell phone calls? Even the sun's light reaches us through very special kinds of waves. In today's lesson, we will investigate vibrations, pulses and waves. So what is the difference between these? A pulse is one movement that causes a wave, like a Mexican wave. Vibrations are regular to and fro or up and down movements like the movement of a tuning fork or a guitar string. Vibrations are the source of waves. In order to create a vibration, energy is required. Energy is then passed on in the form of a wave. Do you know that waves carry the energy for most of our entertainment? Let's look at an example. This radio receives invisible radio waves which travel through the air at 300 million meters per second. When you turn up the volume on a radio really loudly, you can feel the vibrations of the sound waves. If you put your hand on the table next to a loud radio, you can feel the sound waves passing through the wood. Now that we understand what a vibration is, we might ask how it fits in with waves. A wave forms when a vibration occurs in a medium and the energy of the vibration travels through the medium. Now let's look at an example. For example, in a slinky, the spring is the medium and the movement of the hand causes the vibration. One cycle of the vibration results in one pulse that travels through the medium. Keke will now demonstrate a pulse's movement with the help of a slinky spring. To find a definition of what a pulse is, I would like you to look very carefully as we create a pulse in a slinky spring. Write down all the things that you observe. Do you see that there is a movement, the movement of the person's hand that disturbs the coils of the slinky next to the person's hand? But notice the disturbance affects other coils of the slinky too. In fact, all the coils of the slinky move in the same way. The coils move up away from their original position, then down past the original position, then back to the original position. How do these observations help us to define a pulse? Well, we can now say that a pulse is a single disturbance that moves through a medium. I'm sure you will agree that it's quite a logical definition. So if a pulse is a single disturbance that moves through a medium, then what is a wave? Did the demonstration help you figure out the answer to the question? Here's our definition of a wave. A wave is many of the same pulses moving through a medium. We can say that a wave is a series of pulses that moves through a medium. I'm pretty sure that you came to a very similar conclusion. But do you understand what I mean when I use the word medium? Let me clarify. Remember earlier in the lesson we said that waves are everywhere? It can travel through air, it can travel through water, and it can obviously travel through a slinky spring. What do these things, air, water, and the metal of the spring, have in common? They are all made up of particles of matter. So, we can use the word medium to describe the different types of matter that a pulse or a wave can move through. Now that we have all the new terms sorted out, let's think about the example of a pulse moving in the slinky again. The first thing that you should have seen is that there is a lot of movement here, and when we talk about motion, we must also talk about energy. The up and down movement of the person's hand transfers energy to the spring. This causes a disturbance in the spring and the energy of this disturbance is then transferred from one coil to the next. Do you notice that we are talking about more than one type of motion here? Let's look at the demonstration again, but this time I'm going to attach a ball to one of the slinky coils. Can you see that the ball is moving up and down while the pulse continues through the slinky from left to right? We can say that the pulse is the evidence that energy is being transferred through the medium. 
This is very important to remember. When investigating pulses and waves, we need to understand that we are looking at two things in motion. One, the movement of particles inside the medium. Two, the movement of pulses or waves through the medium. Now that we've looked at how a succession of pulses make up a wave, we can investigate the difference between the two types of waves. But why is this so important? Well, firstly, it helps us to tell exactly what type of wave we are looking at. For example, in the pulses we have looked at in the slinky spring, the movement of the particles of the medium are perpendicular, that is, at right angles to the movement of the pulse. To describe this unusual motion, we use the word transverse, which means lying across or lying at right angles. So this type of pulse is called a transverse pulse. The waves in the slinky we have studied have all been made up of transverse pulses, so they are called transverse waves. Can you think of an example that we have looked at so far that is not a transverse wave? In other words, where has the movement of the particles not been at right angles to the movement of the pulse or wave? Think about the wind moving through the grass again. Here the stalks of the grass are moving forwards and backwards in the same direction as the wave. This is called a longitudinal wave. I hope that you can clearly see that there is a difference in the particle movement of a transverse and a longitudinal wave. Now to differentiate between transverse waves and longitudinal waves. Shanti will also demonstrate a longitudinal wave in a slinky spring. We pull and push on the spring along its length and we repeat the pulling and pushing vibration. It sets up a pattern of vibration in the spring. Let's review this pattern in slow motion. A series of pushes and pulls runs down the spring. The pushing and pulling on the spring disturbs it and creates a wave which runs along the spring. The direction of the disturbance and the direction of wave travel are parallel to each other. We call this type of wave where the direction of disturbance is parallel to the direction of wave travel, a longitudinal wave. This wave consists of a series of compressions where the coils of the spring are squashed closely together and rarefactions where the coils of the spring are stretched further apart. As you can see, the coils of the spring are compressed when the spring is pushed in and they are stretched apart when the spring is extended again. The compressions and rarefactions alternate along the length of the spring. This brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Let's recap what we have learned. We've learned that vibrations are continuous to and fro movements that cause a pulse and successive pulses make a wave. We've also learned to differentiate between the two types of waves, longitudinal waves and transverse waves. Have a look on the Mindset website at www.mindset.ca.za forward slash learn for more videos on this topic. You can also see the task video with revision questions on waves to test your understanding. Goodbye.